can't miss practice. I won't be allowed to play. We got the state champs in what, like two weeks? Okay, aren't you excited? Oh, you mean excited for the biggest baseball game of my entire <laughs> life? I heard he passed out at practice. He pretty much spent the whole night in the ER. I got a kid who was here earlier. Okay. Dad's over concerned. I know my son, okay? And, and there's definitely something wrong with him. You're a healthy kid, you'll be fine. He said he passed out at school. I do think you need to prepare yourself. As a kid, this is serious. It's such an honor to meet you. Um, I've checked out the film. So I want to ask, for any of our audiences who hasn't seen the film yet, can you give us a little bit of backstory? Yeah, so um, the film's about my diagnosis and back in 2015 and uh, my diagnosis of brain cancer and really just the, the power of prayer and not giving up on uh, faith. How about coming from a father's perspective, was it for you to hear your son's diagnosis? What was going through your mind and your thoughts? It, it devastates you. Bryce was our only child, uh, his mom and my only child. And, and, and like uh, uh, most single, you know, parents with a single child, it, your child is your life. Uh, so I, when you're told that uh, you have brain cancer, uh, your child's brain cancer, it, it devastates you, literally devastates you. But at the same time, you have to be super strong and not let your child know the, the concerns and the worries about having, you know, being diagnosed with that. So it, 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 was, uh, it was a trying time. And now for you, when you got that, I think anybody would have automatically think this is the end. And it doesn't matter, I guess, what stage of life you're in, whether you're a really young child or an adult, it just, or, you know, an older adult. It can probably devastate you, but you, at least from the movie, it could be wrong, seem to have kind of just a steady faith in that. Like, what was going through your mind when you got that diagnosis? Yeah, I, uh, so I just made uh, Team USA in San Diego, and uh, we were flying for our uh, big end of summer tournament in uh, Nagoya, Japan. Um, a couple of days before the, the flight, um, we went to the hospital and that's where they um, diagnosed me with, uh, or we did the surgery, I had an emergency brain surgery, and then they diagnosed me with uh, brain cancer. But at that point when I got diagnosed, I was like, yeah, I mean, just uh, sew me up because I got a plane to catch in a couple of days, so we got to get this thing going. Did it hit you, the reality of your diagnosis, or were you just like, well, just get it fixed, I got things to do? Uh, after, after the doctor said that I won't be making that flight, no, that's when it hit me. But um, yeah, before then, I just wanted to get back on the playing field with my teammates. But you, you were going through it. You had always said to me that you knew you had this faith. I didn't, that you were going to be fine, you said. Yeah, I felt confident that I was going to be, I was going to make it at the end. So. And, and that's how I believe God was involved because there's no way as a parent when you find out you have brain cancer that, that you're going to be that confident. And, and um, I, I, look, uh, one of the, after one of the surgeries, I think it was the first surgery, it, it blows you away when your child looks at you, and, and this, is a, this is a true depiction. He looked at me and said, Dad, am I going to die? And his friend, actually, that he met at the hospital had brain cancer just kind of like his, but it was a different strain. It was a, a terminal brain cancer. Bryce was one, but um, uh, he passed away, and that day when we were back in his room, he looked at me and, and said, Dad, am I going to die? Uh, that is a moment that you never forget. Um, so yeah, it's powerful, but I lost faith, he didn't. And, and that, I believe, was God working in, his, in the, the, the mysterious ways that, they, that he works. Yeah, like giving you the peace, and I know that. Giving you the peace, yeah. The Lord does talk about us wanting to have like that faith like a child, or you know, just looking through things from a Children, child's perspective. So I think that's amazing that the Lord was able to calm you down and to, you know, it's going to be okay, make you have that peace to help your dad. I was really interested in your story because a few years ago, I met a friend. He posted that he was diagnosed with brain cancer. What was the process for you guys like towards the end? And do you have any encouraging words for him and his family? I never said remission with us. It was, they went in and either got the, the tumor or they call it an enhancement in, in the tumor bed because they, unless they open you up and check it out, they can't tell you it's, it's tumor. But if it grows, it's tumor. But uh, they never had that. They always had an enhancement in his, in his uh, tumor bed. Um, so when it started to grow, we kind of knew it was, but it wasn't uh, remission or stages. But, um, I, you know, as a, as a uh, uh, father of it, I, I can tell you, 
don't give up on 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 the, your faith and God has a plan. That's that's basically what I could say. Yeah, don't don't lose faith, and, uh, and prayer is powerful. Speak on that about the power of prayer, because too many times people will go to prayer as the last resort instead of the first. How was it with you? Were you just like that was the last thing for you, or was it the first thing that you did? Uh, well, the prayer cathedral at my well, high school was kind of a last resort kind of thing. But, but yeah, it was. But we, but he, had, we, um, but because he went to a Christian high school, a Catholic high school, um, the priest had uh, been to his uh, room many times. He'd been to school a few times uh, when he was able to get out of the hospital, and they did prayers. So we, uh, we it was always praying, and we actually went to the uh, one of the um, uh, missions in I th where was it in Carl and. Calabasas. Mm -hmm. um, we went uh, to a mission there, and he lit a candle. So we no, we believed in it. It wasn't a last minute, but the prayer itself was prior to him going to uh, a, 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 a experimental trial, and that's what saved him. But it was just because of it was the last thing that happened. But I, I, I we definitely had steps all the way. Yeah. Oh, prayer through and out. And yeah. we were talking earlier. Okay, so a little lighter question. You obviously know your real life. So what was a little bit different maybe was dramatized for the film. Tell us about that. It was Hollywooded. Yeah, it was uh, definitely exaggerated at times, and uh, Hollywood kind of took the reins on some parts. Yeah, um, like, like they said, that, I, one of the things a doctor says, oh, yeah, we took the MRI, he's got cancer. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, you take the MRI, you find the tumor, uh, you go have surgery, then they take slices of the tumor and check, make, see if it's benign or not. And it comes back in a day or so, or two days. So we didn't. He had the 11-hour surgery. They said they got all the. Uh, they said they got all the uh, tumor, but they didn't. Um, and that. And then two days later, we found out it wasn't. In the movie, it's that day they find out after the surgery. But that's not the way it happened. <laughs> Well, you guys, I'm so happy that I'm able to chat with you today because obviously it means you're still alive. <laughs> yes. That's a blessing. So thank you so much for sharing your story. And I know it's, this film's going to encourage so many people. So I know that after we were talking earlier, you were talking about health and things you started researching. I know a lot of times if someone gets a diagnosis, some may want to research and find out what they can do to help. Others um, are just too scared to even Google. What did you do as soon as you heard about your son? Uh, I wish my son, my beautiful son, would have listened a little bit, but no, he does. He's doing a good job. What we did is I went and just went online, and this is what's happening with the iPads that Bryce is giving away uh, to the children in, in the, uh, on the cancer uh, floors, the oncology floors in the hospitals. It, you're able to uh, go and look, and, and nutrition is so vital to being able to fight cancer going forward. Uh, a few things that I didn't even know, like if a child, when you're a child, you get your children to chew their vegetables, to eat vegetables. The, the chewing of the vegetables creates enzymes in your body, and that allows your, uh, they coat their, your cells and allows them to fight cancer. Juicing, juicing is so important because you can take all the vitamins, put them into your gut. Your gut, uh, when you eat, your body takes a lot of energy uh, to uh, digest, and that takes away from fighting cancer. Juicing gets the uh, vitamins right down into your body without having to digest a lot. So there's so many things with nutrition that can help people with cancer, and, and we're just blessed that, that Bryce is actually following that and that we kind of are able to pass that on to the children that we are now helping in cancer so much for that information. I know it's vital and a lot of people aren't familiar with it. So it's really good that you're talking about it. And um, there is a lot, you know, I've talked to a cancer doctor in Mexico before who has so many higher rates of patients that will go there and come back. And he talks about health because you have no idea how important it is for the vegetables, the, meat, the things and you exercise, eat. And exercise and yes. exercise. Yes, absolutely.